everyone! In this video I'll be showing you how I made Ivor's axe out of a PVC pipe and no Dremel, so please sit back, relax and enjoy! To make my axe I needed a template, as this was my first time ever making a weapon. I used Jack's Cosplays, the link is in the description below, and I cut this template out three times in foam in total. The first was on 10mm as this was the core and I felt a thicker foam was appropriate. I also wanted to get the base of the handle started so cut a 1m PVC pipe in half and wrapped in 2mm foam. I did leave the bottom exposed as this will be wrapped in more foam for the leather strap details later on. I didn't want to pad it out with foam beforehand. Next I needed to attach both the base of the handle and head together. Here I cut the other two axe head patterns out. I didn't need to but I extended the pattern to ensure I had enough to cover over the core pattern piece as I did after all add length because I cut it in half. Again this is optional but I used foam clay to fill the gaps. Downside is you do have to wait for it to dry however. Otherwise, just simply use a higher density foam so that the head is sturdier and won't make you worry like me. Using 2mm foam, I cut out two pieces, one for the top and one for the bottom of the axe head to create the illusion that it was solid. Here you can also see I drew out my guidelines ready for cutting to create that sharp edge. Next I began cutting along the guideline I made at an angle. Make sure your knife is sharp however for a much more pleasant time cutting compared to me. I also recommend alternating between both sides. You don't want a perfect side and then have to start all over again on the other afterwards. This is also where I cut the butt of my axe back to its desirable shape. The reason I left it longer to then cut was because I felt it gave a smooth finish with minimal sanding needed for that section. As I knew foam clay would take a while to dry due to the density of the ball for the butt of the axe, I made it at this stage of the project so I could leave it to harden whilst I carried on with the rest of the weapon. Now this is where you would usually use a Dremel, however I had to use sandpaper and began smoothing out the surface. I used high density 5mm foam which was a lot easier to sand whereas the 10mm core I used for the centre was only CF60, meaning it just crumbled. So I definitely recommend using a high density foam for weapons such as CF100 to minimise this risk whether you sand or use a Dremel. I then cut out the little wolf section of my pattern and coloured the areas I was going to cut out. You don't have to do this part, but I found it was easier for me to visualise so I didn't make any mistakes. Using pins, I then pinned my pattern into place on 2mm foam for me to trace. Make sure you repeat the step for the other side, I also marked where this piece would go on the main bulk of the axe head ready for sticking down. This is when I started getting really excited because it was starting to come together. I added a circle of 5mm foam onto 2mm to create a sturdy lid and began working from the top of the axe to the bottom with all the details. I used a mixture of 2mm and 5mm foam throughout, alternating where I needed more depth. I also ensured I had a reference photo up all the time to refer to. As the detailed sections along the handle varied in depth, I used 5mm foam to create the bulky areas. I found this also helped when combined with 2mm foam to create these slanted angles. Here you can hopefully see what I mean as the shapes begin to form. This second small strip of 5mm foam is added again. To apply another 2mm strip on top to create this angled illusion. Now the ball was dry, I began creating a pattern for the detailing around it. This took a while as I found it hard to get an accurate reference photo of this section, but was finally happy with one I made. 
Replicating a wooden texture in foam is one of my favourite things to do, so as long as you draw random lines that occasionally meet, you'll be fine. I also found that this actually helps blend the seams in this section of the foam. Now it was time for the more intricate patterns on the handle. Here is a better shot of the types of foam strips I prepare beforehand. And after a bit of manipulation, here is what they look like after. I did spend most of the day using the same two types of foam already mentioned and repeating these steps to create the details down the handle. For this piece in particular, however, I did use split pins to add a little more realism. I also thought I'd show you how I cut the 2mm foam at a 45 degree angle. By doing this you were able to create better curvature within your foam pieces. Here is the result of cutting such a line. Throughout the axe there are so many little details. I ended up drawing rough patterns on the foam like this. I then cut multiple thin strips of, yes you guessed it, 2mm foam again and stuck into place. By this point I had finished the main details of the handle up to where the leather straps would be bound. It was now time to work on the end of the handle. I used foam clay to create this cone shaped tip. You can however use alternative methods such as rolling foam into a cone if you don't like waiting for foam clay to dry. I actually used this method to create the additional details on the tip. Working out the perfect shape did take a few attempts, but eventually I was happy and it was time to piece all the details together. As you can see, once again I drew a rough guideline out on the cone. Now it was time for the leather wrap. You can use leather strips or faux leather if you have any laying around at home, or using 2mm foam, tin foil and an iron you can try and replicate it. And here is my axe with all the details applied. It was now ready for priming and painting. There are plenty of products out there to prime, however I used three layers of plaster dip on each side, making sure it was dry in between each layer. As I wanted the silver to really stand out on the axe, I used a silver chrome spray paint. I masked off the areas I didn't need silver on and began. Once I had primed and got the base colour on, I began to build up the colours. I started with a darker silver metallic paint to start weathering the axe. I bought this really cheap from a kids section in a craft shop. I applied this all over the silver sections. Using my trusty black acrylic paint, I began adding shading and depth to areas. I did however discover black came out a little too harsh so early on, so mixed with silver to create a perfect shade. Using a sponge like this also helped remove excess paint resulting in less solid blocks of colour. Here you can hopefully see the axe slowly come to life as a result of building up the paint. For the leather effect, I always start with a lighter shade of brown and darken over multiple layers. I also went over the silver areas again with black to finish off. I used dark blue and black acrylic paints for the wooden section of the handle, following the same technique of building up layers and voila, I was finished. Thank you.